All right, so let's talk about evolution because it is an incredible scientific discovery that many people still argue against, mainly because it is a complex idea that requires a time scale that can be mind boggling. So oftentimes people don't understand it or they simply don't want to understand it for whatever reason. And when confronted with the topic, they often fall back on the timely question, well, if evolution is true, then why are there still monkeys? Which they think is a good question, but it isn't. So in this episode, I'm going to correct some misconceptions about evolution and explain why there are still monkeys, even though evolution is true. Stay tuned. Hi, and welcome to The Cool Thing About Science. I'm Matt Parker. Now, evolution is often dismissed as being just a theory, but as we've learned in a previous episode, scientific theories are the highest accomplishments in science. Evolution, however, is a fact, not a theory. There are plenty of strands of evidence that show that plants and animals have been changing throughout the millions of years that life has existed on Earth. The theory part of evolution is the explanation about how that change has occurred. And there are many things that can account for this from sexual selection to environmental pressures to mutations, just to name a few. But back to the topic at hand. If evolution is true, then why are there still monkeys? Well, there are many errors in the thought process behind this question. First of all, humans did not evolve from monkeys. Humans and monkeys and chimpanzees and gorillas and others all evolved from a common ancestor that has since gone extinct. Evolution, however, does not suppose that for something new to evolve, something old has to go extinct. Evolution is not a linear progression. Instead, it is the branching off of species as populations change. This is what accounts for the tree of life. Similar to your family tree, you have cousins with which you share grandparents. On the tree of life, we are cousins with chimpanzees, orangutans, and bonobos because we share a common ancestor. And you may not like your cousins, but that doesn't make you any less related to them. What causes a new branch on the tree of life is not a monkey giving birth to a human. That is not how it happens. The changes are often minor and require large amounts of time to accumulate before a new species arises. And by large amounts of time, I mean thousands to millions of years, many, many generations. This time span can be really hard to understand, especially since our lifetimes are nothing more than a few measly decades. What causes these changes are things like environmental pressures. If the environment changes, the creatures living there may also have to change in order to survive. This can account for the many different kinds of primates, their different colors, whether or not they have opposable thumbs, the size of their eyes and ears, the length of their tail, and the amount of hair they have on their body, just to name a few. These features help each type of primate to survive in their environment by being better hunters or by being able to escape predators or by being selected by a sexual partner. If they did not change with their environment, they likely would not and often did not survive. There are millions upon millions of fossils of species that did not make it and are now extinct. Through long periods of time and the accumulation of many small changes, humans made their way onto the scene. We no doubt have many characteristics that are very different from monkeys and other primates, but we undeniably have many more that are very similar. It is not that we evolved from monkeys. Instead, we evolved alongside monkeys and chimpanzees and gorillas and so on. We each had different pressures applied to us and we managed to adapt in order to survive. You see, humans are not at the top of an evolutionary ladder. We are but one branch on the ever-growing tree of life. You see, that's the cool thing about science. We can use it to develop an understanding of our place in nature and see how we fit in with all the other creatures that roam the earth, both past and present. So stay curious, keep asking questions, and continue exploring the world around you. Because life on Earth is incredibly beautiful, and we're related to it all. Thanks for watching.